people don't understand the impact that our actions do have because the average American is using five times more resources than is sustainable. A lot of that is embedded into our society. I really hate this whole individual actions don't make a difference thing. Like I'm just an individual. The corporations have all the power. The government has all the power. There's eight billion of us and about two or three billion of those people are better off, can afford fast fashion, like cute outfits for the weekend kind of thing. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Just a Position, the podcast where we explore mental health, vulnerability, and personal life journeys with creators you know and love. So make sure you subscribe to the YouTube channel if you haven't already and listen to new episodes out every Thursday. We have a very special in person guest. Ooh, we finally hi. Saw the well, everyone, please welcome Sage. I'm so stoked to have you on. I'm so excited to be here. <laughs> I have to introduce how we met in the first place because it's such a random funny story okay i was filming and get ready with me and i was like is he gonna get mad if i if i explain what happened <laughs> no please please air it all out <laughs> it was- <laughs> it's so funny so okay correct me if i'm wrong but i remember meeting you for the first time surfing yes 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 and was it twice I think it was twice. I also didn't like act like I knew who you were. I don't think we actually (laughs) exchanged names. Yes. Because I knew who you were, and I and but I was like, I'm. I feel like I don't want to make people feel weird. You know what I mean? Like I'm not gonna be like, oh my god. So I was just like, oh, like that's fine. (laughs) And so you were too far forward on your board, and Mm -hmm. you kept nose diving. Mm -hmm. And so I went over to you, and I was like. You should just get back a little bit. <laughs> Basically, she was like, you really suck. You need some lessons on how to surf. <laughs> well, literally, we were surfing out in like Waikiki and like it was a while ago. So I think I had just gotten into surfing. When I say I surf, it's like a <laughs> very loose definition of it. Like we, had, I had just gotten into it, um, you know, getting pounded by waves as I do. And <laughs> <laughs> you were kind enough to come up to me. <laughs> <laughs> and then we like got to chatting the second time mm-hmm. around, I think, was which is when like we got to talk a little bit more. Yeah. And then I followed you on TikTok. But this is like months later. Yeah. Months later. later. Like we like I never saw him again. I don't think I still don't think we exchanged names. Mm-hmm. I don't I don't think there was like an intro. Then you saw one of my TikToks, you followed mm-hmm. me. Cause I'd, I don't know, something went super viral. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, and I was just like, oh my gosh, like someone who's like in Hawaii making content about like, um, <clears throat> you know, sustainability and conservation. This is so cool. Did not even put two and two together. That is so like, funny. <laughs> until you messaged me and I'm like, oh shit. Yeah. yeah I was like, we hey, have met. Like, <laughs> so funny. So random that that's of all the places yeah. we would meet. But please, for anyone who doesn't know you, please introduce yourself and like what you do. My name is Sage Lanier. I'm a climate activist and I'm the founder of Sustainable and Just Future, which is a Gen Z, we're like 80%, no, maybe higher, but maybe like 90% Gen Z, almost all Gen Z uh, organization working on climate education. Basically, you know, we as young people are not getting a good not getting the climate education that we need to be prepared for a climate change future. Climate education is like non-existent or it's just so bad. Mm -hmm. So we're very solutions oriented. We're very action focused and we're trying to push people into um, activism, into being prepared for um, the future and like ready to apply it to your career, whatever your career is, data, fashion, whatever. You can do it from a climate lens. So cool. And if you're watching on YouTube, we'll have everything like listed down below so you guys can check out everything um, as well as your social handles. But also you live in Hawaii, which is like amazing. And I'm so glad we're able to have like an in-person conversation about this because most of the people on the podcast are like so far away and, you know, just not many content creators live in Hawaii, but ladies and gentlemen, here we have one. So I'm so excited to chat with you and I really want to get into some like bigger questions and talking about like the work that you do and kind of the perspectives that you have and like spilling a little bit of tea and getting a little controversial about what we think and particularly what you think about the current conversation around climate. But before we get into the serious shit, I want to ask some rapid fire questions okay. just to get to know you a little better. Let's do it. First off, what is your go-to coffee order? Changes all the time. Right now I'm <laughs> really into like a coffee that's like this big, espresso Ooh. shot, a little bit of milk, a little bit of brown sugar. But Love it used it. to be uh, 
a couple weeks ago on an ice Amer- americano <gasps> kick yes changes all the favorite. time that's my favorite okay the a variety i like a variety i'm like ice americano i get bored easily go to that's like my favorite thing ever but cream? i like the espresso game huh cream or black black i like a hardcore bitter i want the taste to just like basically be like a defibrillator where i'm just like oh my god <laughs> that kick is no. strong that's mm-hmm. like my favorite yeah i like coffee but not coffee that he's like coffee <laughs> yeah, sorry. I'm I'm basically that old person who mm. just likes their coffee black. What can I say? But okay, mm. I like the variety. What would you say is your like newest hobby? Like the a recent passion or hobby that you've picked up that you content really creation. Yes. <laughs> I was not. I was just telling uh, you earlier, but like I was not, and I was doing content creation in 2020. I was going viral left and right on Instagram, on TikTok. I was getting all this hate. Like, mm-hmm. you know, like I made it onto like misogynist oh my side God, of TikTok. So and I just got like, oh my. And it was just a really overwhelming. And I was like, I don't think I'm ready for this. Mm-hmm. But now that I'm getting into it again, I literally am like laying up, like, like trying to go to bed and I'm laying up at night, like, that would make a good TikTok. Yes. <laughs> like, so, yeah, I've been having fun. Um, I just, yeah, I think we need more climate people sharing the behind the scenes of their lives. Yes. And yes, stuff. we do. And I think we also need more content creators in Hawaii, especially ones that are focused around, like, the topics that you're focused on. I mean, I'm curious, back when you created content a few years ago, was it similarly about, like, sustainability, um, uh, conservation overall, protecting the planet, or was it, like, completely different? Or were you, like, a fast fashion girly? Oh, no, 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 no. I've (laughs) always been... Actually, like, I have been very one-track-minded in my life. Like, I've been obsessed with, like, uh, politics, social justice, Mm -hmm. environment, since I was, like, maybe 10, 11. I was, I've always been this way. So, yeah, like, I would make just, like, funny, like, this was when TikTok was new, so, like, the ratio Mm -hmm. of people who are watching versus making was very, what is it, low? Right, Mm -hmm. low. And so, you could post anything, and it would just go viral. Mm -hmm. If I got a video with, like, less than, like, 20,000 likes, I'd delete it. It would be, like, I'd be like, oh, that's cringy. Okay. Right. So, I would, like, (laughs) make some dumb little thing to a trending audio about, like, Bernie Sanders, or, like, just Mm -hmm. random stuff. Like, Mm -hmm. I'd be like, you know, when men do this, and Mm -hmm. it, it, it would just go, like, stupid viral. And then same thing was happening on Instagram. Obviously, Instagram has mm-hmm. destroyed their algorithm, and nobody yep. can grow on there anymore. It's yep. so weird. <laughs> but I would just make little funny things or, like, Twitter threads or whatever. Mm-hmm. And, yeah, it was all very focused on and rapid education. Like, I'm always trying to, like, it's I try to I try to go higher level than just, like, what is compost? I'm trying mm-hmm. to do, like, you know, why our society needs to be reshaped to have composting infrastructure Mm -hmm. like how our cities need to be investing to make this enabled and how it's a it's a you know double climate solution like bigger than like cute little zero waste swaps more like you know um community change for system change Mm -hmm. that sort of thing which i love it i feel like we need way more conversations focused on that end of it because i think so much of the sustainability space has been dominated by the very aesthetic (laughs) like trash in the jar zero waste i get beef with zero wasters (laughs) we are not friends we do not get along (laughs) i want to ask you more about that later because i'm genuinely interested i'm curious last Rapid fire question. What is your zodiac sign? Libra. But no one ever gets it right. Okay. Okay? I don't think that I have anything. I mean, I don't know anything about astrology, but Mm -hmm. literally every time someone guesses, asks, whatever, like people be like, oh, you're definitely like a Taurus or an Aries or Capricorn. (gasps) Okay. Like that's what I get the comments I get on on TikTok. No one ever. I was going to ask, like, I'm I'm still learning, but you definitely give off Taurus vibes, which is my my sign too but mm. hey i like there's so many libras in my life i love libras there, so Thank you. <laughs> yeah i, I don't know cool. i guess i don't i don't give off libra vibes uh, but i don't know anything about astrology yeah i'm very i don't know very much either I've basically really what tiktok tarot teaches cards me lately though oh on, really on TikTok. They, like they bro they come on my free page and they're shuffling and i'm like give it to me the ones what's that are going like, on in my life a tell certain me. person is thinking about you and they want to they're come like back you're into about your to life. step into a new yes. chapter <laughs> money's coming your way yes. and i'm like yes girl <laughs> yes like, it is repost repost <laughs> i love it well okay super cool i kind of touching on what you were like uh talking a little bit about before how you've always been a one-track minded you've always been like passionate about this kind of stuff what inspired your passion for you know politics and for um wanting to protect the planet um where, where did that like originate gosh that's so hard um 
I feel like I was at first and foremost like a very angry little girl like realizing that women were in just I don't know coming into this world and realizing that women are um so desecrated but like I felt like every what I was growing into was so holy and so like you know just just insane like when they start telling you about menstruation and Mm -hmm. they start telling you about pregnancy and stuff because they kind of keep it from younger girls in our Mm -hmm. society which they shouldn't yeah but they start telling you that and you're just like this is like groundbreaking Mm -hmm. but then the way that women are so minimized and put aside and and just taken advantage of in our society I think that was like my just like village villain origin story i was i was just such an angry little feminist Mm -hmm. like at 11 years old i was like seething frothing like blood Mm -hmm. pumping through my veins at all times like always Mm -hmm. angry and um then mike brown was murdered when i was 14 Mm -hmm. and i remember distinctly uh what my parents were seeing on tv on cnn versus what i was seeing on tumblr which Mm -hmm. was like the social media platform of the day yep and I was, you know, I was scrolling and it was like live on the ground updates from people who were there and the coverage was so different. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, I'm, I'm biracial and that also was just like an, an opening moment for me to realize yeah. that like, I don't know, that was, that was also a thing that I feel like wasn't super prominent in my like childhood childhood oh, and gotcha. just like it would hit me like a truck. And then I came to the environment um, around 16, 17, kind of realizing that, like, there's no human rights on a dead planet, like, really, like, one movement to encapsulate them all, and realizing how interrelated these things are. It's like people, you know, people, you you can force people to work in sweatshops because you destroyed their river, Mm -hmm. so now they're reliant on bottled water and the food you're trucking in because they can't grow food. Yep. And that's how you exploit people and the, you know what I mean? Like this sort of thing. Yep. And it's like the, and that's the origins. That's how you get fast fashion is mm-hmm. by exploiting people and by desecrating their environment. So it's all related. Mm-hmm. I love that you touch on that because I can agree more. Like when I was younger, I had different like social issues that I was very passionate about. And I relate to you a lot on like the, the angry side of it. Cause I remember being in high school and just being like, why are people just not fuming? Why is no one doing nothing about these social issues? How dare they? Like, I was so angry at the world for, like, not doing more. Um, And I had different social issues I was passionate about, but then I came to the realization that, like, everything is connected Mm. to the climate. Mm -hmm. And even if it isn't now, it will be Mm -hmm. when, you know, um, climate change you know, starts affecting more and more people um, on a granular basis around the world as we see kind of like the installments of every negative impact that the climate will have for us. Everything will be connected. Every single social issue will be affected by the climate, which is where I really realized like, oh my gosh, this really is the most pressing, urgent, and important issue of our time because it is so connected to everything else. So from when you were like 16 And then on, that's when you just kind of decided, like, did you just decide, like, this is what I want to do with my life? This is what I want to focus on? Or was it, like, confusing for you? What kind of was the Yeah, I've always been obsessive. Like, I think think my friends, even, like, in high school, like, I think the general idea of me as a young girl, and, like, fuck these people for this, but whatever. (laughs) It was, like, it was, like, oh, you know, Sage, she's so fun. She, you know, like, fun to go to parties. They like talking about boys, but she mm-hmm. never puts down those damn politics. Like, mm-hmm. peop- we would be getting ready, and my friends would be, like, can we leave the political stuff at home tonight? <laughs> and I was, like, eh, like, like if, no. if a white boy tries me, I'm going to try him back. Like, I don't know what to tell you. So, like, yeah. I, like, I was always, like, I guess just, like, the annoying one. Mm-hmm. And just being conventionally attractive continued to get me through the door. And, like, people were, like, mm-hmm. all right, like, we're still going to, you know what I mean? She's mm-hmm. still in mm-hmm. But then I went off to college, and I went to Berkeley, which is, like, the most liberal oh, wow. place okay. ever. And I was, like, oh, my people, my people. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> like, like all of a sudden, I'm not the annoying one. We're all about this. And mm-hmm. so, you know, me and my friends were, like, grabbing burritos and taking the bus down to city council to, like, yell at our um, city council members. That's and so like, badass. Get them, you know what I mean? It's like, it's, like, such a vibe. I love it. It's yeah. so inspiring once you finally are able to be connected, like, with other people. Who share who your passion. understand that and share it and just, you know, like, get it, yeah. you know? Um, 
okay, that must have been like super transformative for you. And it's cool to see how it's like translated into your content because that's really what drew, obviously I was trying to your content because I was like, oh my God, Hawaii, you know, but additionally I was just like, this is so great that someone is calling out kind of the pitfalls of the conservation community, the pitfalls of corporate sustainability of all Mm -hmm. these things in the way that you do because it takes a much higher level perspective I think than what a lot of people think of when it comes to sustainability which is like you know throw one thing less away today you know um (laughs) use uh, I don't know like glass instead of plastic today you know it it's a much bigger perspective which is what I think people really need to see and like you were saying the education just really is not right we cannot solve problems where we don't understand Mm -hmm. and I think what I'm all about is how do we like bully berates and I don't I can't think of another B but like you know protest whatever Mm -hmm. the systems the corporations the governments whatever it is into making sustainable and ethical options the most default accessible easy thing I shouldn't Mm -hmm. whether it's like something honestly look I know plastic is a problem, and I'm not going to say it's not. Mm-hmm. I would say, though, it's very low on my list. Mm-hmm. It's just mm-hmm. not. Like, it has it has such high visibility. And honestly, I think that's because it doesn't challenge any actual systems of power. Mm, yes. yes. The same way that electric cars are taking over, mm-hmm. it's, like, because it's a car. Mm-hmm. It's not transformative. It's We all want, like, Gen Z, like, doesn't have licenses. We want walkable communities. Like, mm-hmm. that's our number one priority when we're looking for somewhere to live. And they're like, no, 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 just get an AV, AV. Like, mm. you know what I mean? Like, we want a, a whole societal transformation, not electric cars, mm-hmm. not plastic free. Um, we want a more ethical, sustainable society. And so I'm looking at what are the ways that we can, like, patchwork together system change by working on the city level, the county level, what you can do in your school, what, you know, if you're a business owner, whether that's, you know, swimwear, whatever what you can do to help patchwork that together because i think a lot of people are also sitting around waiting on like sweeping national ledges that they're like Mm -hmm. biden should really do something about this yep and i'm like i agree but he's not going to (laughs) i'm not waiting yes i am not waiting (laughs) well i think that's a big problem within the sustainability space oh the corporate space like you know, to name one of the many problems, um, is the handoff of responsibility Mm -hmm. when it comes to actual action around, um, you know, sustainability. Um, And it goes all the way from a top level perspective for legislation, politicians, um, you know, corporate CEOs, all the way down to like an individual um, perspective too. I, I've seen the conversation happening in so many different ways. If it's the CEO that's like, well, you know, we want to be more sustainable, but like the manufacturing selections and like the availability that we have for like certain resources and the cost because people just don't want to purchase more expensive, you know, whatever, all the way down to the individual that's like, mm, our politicians should really do something. But when it comes to actual like change that I want to implement, like, you know, I don't really want to do anything. And that's not to put the blame, you know, to say, because I think in the yeah. sustainability space, there's a lot of finger pointing, mm. um, which I don't think is productive. And I'm curious to hear your thoughts on that. Mm. But I think there is a lot of like shifting responsibility to someone else. Yes. OK. OK. I want to talk about this. The <laughs> conversation between like, I think there's there's just like this never ending argument we're having where some people are like individual action doesn't make a difference Mm -hmm. we need system change there's no ethical consumption under capitalism yes i think that's fully bullshit Mm -hmm. um and I, i know that's hard for some people to swallow but i don't think people quite understand especially if you're an american you're an american australian european whatever you live in these privileged countries people don't understand the impact that our actions do have because the average American is using five times more resources than is sustainable. Mm -hmm. A lot of that is embedded into our society, like cars. I cannot choose to not have a car in Honolulu. Mm -hmm. We have to, like we don't have good public transit. Yep. Unless you want to like live in like the the down, like downtown. Um, But, and that's like a whole nother thing. It's like, do you improve public transit because then it makes it more accessible to tourism and mm-hmm. we already have an over tourism problem. So it, yep. it's messy, it's messy. But a lot of that consumption is not embedded into the, you know, 
fabrics of art. A lot of it is fast fashion, technology, buying brand new cars, buying, you know, building brand new houses. And those are choices that we either like are financially incentivizing by buying that brand new house mm-hmm. um, or we are like literally creating the man for by buying from Shein. Mm-hmm. And I don't think like I, I really hate this whole individual actions don't make a difference thing because it's like there's eight billion of us mm-hmm. and about two or three billion of those people are like wealthier, better off, can afford fast fashion, like cute outfits for the weekend kind of mm-hmm. thing. Not you know what I mean? Like let me not oversimplify, but <laughs> I just think people don't realize how much their demand drives consumption. And I use the example of uh, plant milk Mm, to mm -hmm. describe this. So plant milk is now making up 15% of the total market. Gen Z is buying 20% less uh, dairy milk than Mm. uh, any generation before. Mm -hmm. And so the dairy industry is like flipping their shit. They're like, oh my God, we've lost an entire generation of milk. I was just just writing a post (laughs) about this day. I thought it was so funny. And that's, like, literally consumer demand pushing a market. Yep. And now, like, the dairy industry is on the way out. Mm-hmm. Like, they, they are doomed low-key. Yep. In a lot of ways. So it's, like, our, like your, your actions don't happen in a vacuum. What you do as an individual is part of a collective. Exactly. So, like, like that's, like, a colonial mindset, too, to be, like, mm-hmm. oh, like, mm-hmm. individual action. Uh, mm-hmm. I care about my community. Okay. Yep. Let's, let's decolonize that. Yep. Exactly. It's, I could not agree more because I've heard so many people say that or express that sentiment of like, uh, what, it, like, I'm just an individual, like the corporations have all the power, the government has all the power. I'm not able to do anything, but my biggest belief is like you vote with your dollar and in a system like the USA, everything is tethered to capitalism so severely that like the market has so much more power than people realize Mm. and like what you were saying with plant milk with supporting businesses you know um that do have more sustainable um you know ethics within their business practices that do offer more sustainable solutions that is such like a easy change that can be made that is so influential Mm. and even with what you're saying like there's no ethical consumption of under capitalism i so i always get frustrated when i hear (laughs) that because it dismisses any chance of thinking about how we as a collective can make positive influential Mm -hmm. change Mm -hmm. i think a lot of times when people suggest that not that i'm necessarily like (laughs) fully disagreeing with like what's really driving that thought because capitalism is just it is such a mess and there's so much corruption there's so many earth damaging aspects of you know like um the system that the usa has for example but i've seen that statement be used to kind of offset any responsibility Mm -hmm. as kind of like a hopelessness message where Mm -hmm. it's like well can't do anything anyway so i'm not even gonna bother trying which is actually one thing i wanted to ask you about with kind of the conversations and like the news coverage that you see within the sustainability space i can't help but feel that what i largely see is so negative Mm -hmm. when it comes to any conversations around the environment and maybe i am putting like a tinfoil hat on Mm -hmm. (laughs) i sense you're agreeing i can't help but put a tinfoil hat on that corporations love that they love that people feel hopeless they love that we feel helpless and basically think like well we're screwed we can't do anything what are we going to be able to do i don't know what do you think (laughs) okay on the last question though last thing i want to say is Mm -hmm. because i don't want anyone to get mad at me and be like oh she thinks no no it is so nuanced Mm -hmm. um i think like when we when we are balancing individual and system responsibility it's like Mm -hmm. we can all we can mm-hmm. hold ourselves and each other accountable while we also try to hold corporations and yes. governments accountable. So snaps, snaps. Um, I could I could talk about it for ten hours. <laughs> um, so yeah, climate conversation is very negatively focused, and um, I think you know like there's a lot of reason to be negative. Don't get me wrong, mm-hmm. but I think at this point it's um, not really serving anyone. You know, climate anxiety on mm-hmm. the rise. Like there's these studies coming out saying that like um, most people are are not. I don't know if it's most. A lot of people at this point are literally like avoiding news about the environment, mm. which obviously isn't getting us anywhere. Yes. Um, Just it worse. We're in a very bad situation. Don't get me wrong. But all we can do is like 
we they, the cards have been dealt all we can do is try our best like mm-hmm. there has to be a path forward that looks climate resilient there has to be a future in which we're capable of feeding and housing all of our people our whole population through climate catastrophe mm-hmm. like you know where they're saying in some instances they're saying there's going to be a billion refugees by 2050 mm-hmm. where do we put the people okay let's get planning where mm-hmm. are we putting them what areas are at risk like bangladesh pakistan those are probably going underwater mm-hmm. waikiki gone yep. yep so what do we i mean like waikiki is you know now it's mostly tourists so yeah not a big loss right like. <laughs> obviously yeah. like ancestrally that's you know a, a different story but in yeah. the real world impact right now that's not going to impact them any mm-hmm. like native people or yeah or locals even but um it's not just waikiki like you know all of the shorelines of all the hawaiian islands yeah. all you know all even of the tuvalu the right world. now is like yeah. currently going underwater because yeah. of climate change yeah. yeah tahiti's flooding right now mm-hmm. Um, and so what resilient systems, flexible systems are we going to put in place? Because uh, it's like as we move towards more localized food systems, which is better, then you have to plan for, okay, let's take Hawaii as an example. Hawaii only grows 10% of its own food. Mm-hmm. That's obviously a horrible thing. Mm-hmm. Um, they, you know, <clears throat> pre-contact, it looks like Hawaiians are feeding a million people. Mm-hmm. There are a million Hawaiians and they're feeding them completely with this, with this land. So you want more, you know, we want to see more localized indigenous regenerative food systems. What happens if they get taken out by a hurricane? Mm -hmm. Then you need a resilience plan in place. The food comes from California. The food comes from Japan. We need, there are ways like to keep, you know, society will still exist in Mm a hundred years. And I think people have this idea like doom, gone, extinction, and that's not going to happen. That's just not going to happen. And so as, as climate scientists, activists, whatever, or even regular people in our in our in everybody's business, everybody's jobs, careers, you can always do it from a climate lens. I'm always saying that, an ecological lens, not just climate. Mm-hmm. But yeah, we have to start planning for resilience because at the end of the day, there are going to be billions of people on this planet. There's gonna be children. Yep. And we have to do what we can to make sure that they're happy and healthy and fed and housed and educated. Like it's Exactly. It only gets worse the less we pay attention to it. The mm-hmm. more we pay attention and the more we plan, the better off they will be. Mm-hmm. And we owe it to them to be good ancestors. Mm-hmm. I completely agree because um, I think viewing this whole issue through the scope of like, we're doomed, there's nothing we can do, the world's going to shit, why even bother, is so dismissive of the reality that like a lot of people will face, are currently facing or will face the more that climate change starts to impact <clears throat> each of our lives. And it's, I get so frustrated when I see so much of the doomsday talk around it. Not that I think it should be like rainbows and butterflies and right. like, you know, I, I think there needs to be a balance, but I, I've always believed in the power of like positive reinforcement when it comes to like actionable items around yeah. like climate action while still maintaining accountability for the the people and the institutions and the governments that are not doing anything about trying to protect the climate, you know? And so when I see just like the constant inundation of just the negative news coverage and also what we're seeing, you know, particularly with Gen Z, the the depression and the anxiety that surrounds anything that has to do with the climate, it's not only ensuring that we don't, like you said, have plans in place for the future to actually protect people and get people the resources that they need but i think it's just making it easier for corporations and governments to like not do anything about it yes yeah and in the in the program i was teaching at berkeley that like i started that it really blew up um yeah for context i was like teaching as an undergrad oh wow that's so cool it's a program that berkeley offers um so like this is a thing that a lot of people do like Mm. it's called decal Mm mm-hmm democratic education at cal but mine ended up being the largest student-led program ever and it's still huge like they have like 150 students this semester okay the biggest semester we did was 300 and that was way too overwhelming but (laughs) we got the record so like boom nice she go i don't think anybody's gonna top that for a while but (laughs) um, (laughs) um but yeah so 
this program got so popular because it's it's called Solutions for a Sustainable and Just Future. Mm. Ah, mm-hmm. you know, <laughs> people are like, oh, okay, interesting. Yeah, solutions. And I just, I started it because I was so fed up with the education. I was getting super doomsday, super <laughs> like, there's nothing you can do, it's too late. Yep. And I was like, bullshit, mm-hmm. bullshit. You are not going to tell me that. So I started <laughs> uh, learning about solutions, researching them, and from all these different topics, food systems, urban planning, you know, um, transportation systems, decarbonization. Like, what is climate, act- climate action now? What does that mean? Mm-hmm. What does that mean? Because you know what? It's actually so much bigger than solar panels and wind turbines. Yes. They're yes. saying that um, we can only meet 55% of our energy ne- demand with renewables while staying under climate goals mm. one, between 1.5 and 2.0 Interesting. Celsius. I did not know that. Wow. The rest of it. I mean, and also like only, uh, not only, but like it's like 70 something, 75% of all emissions are fossil fuels. But that leaves us with another 25%, mm-hmm. which is largely deforestation and meat production. Yes. Animal agriculture. Yep. Yep. So, yeah, like it's like, you know, we have to we have to restore ecosystems. We have to start composting because landfills are the third largest source source of methane. Mm-hmm. We uh, you know, there's all of these biological and technological uh, potential for sequestration. And let's like talk about what that looks like. So we're it, like I like to think of it as like bringing the monster out of the dark. You mm-hmm. really explain we break down by economic sector here's what is causing climate change Mm -hmm. so it's like and also before we even talk about renewable energy how will we talk about reduction yes thank you for bringing that up because (laughs) that's the thing that everyone looks over like less new cars and less new things like we need to produce less because industry is 24 percent of global greenhouse gas emissions Mm. um 14 is transportation that's by and large our supply chain it's Mm. not just ourselves it's our packages Mm -hmm. and you know shipping all the things that we you know it's like this got this part comes from China and this part comes mm-hmm. from mm-hmm. Uganda and they all get assembled in Bangladesh. Like it's you know it's a yep. nasty system. So when we are talking about if we can actually transition to a low carbon, low mm-hmm. resource society that is based on services rather than goods. So it's we're not we're not going shopping. That's not the basis of our society. That's not a hobby. Mm-hmm. We're focused on the things you can do: mm-hmm. dancing, sports. Um, wellness, you know, education, like different, like cooking, so many, there's so many other more interesting things that we Mm -hmm. could revolve our lives around Mm -hmm. than shopping. Mm -hmm. And like, yeah, so, and and that, and by and large, like that's a lot of what we, of a lot of what we covered, it's called the circular economy. Mm -hmm. And people go into this program and they are like, you know, you know, doomsday mentality, whatever. And I've had so many people come out and say, I am not the person I am. Mm. when I started this program. That's awesome. Because I've completely changed my mental framework. Mm-hmm. And that was like, that's what I was trying to do. That is so cool. I love that. It's it's changing it from, yeah, that like hopelessness perspective to like, and that's where I think it's so powerful around like what you're trying to do around educating around each of those elements. Because I will say like from my side, you know, I've definitely been passionate about like climate change and stuff like that for a while and solutions for the environment and uh, getting into this business, you know, like cosmetics, huge waste industry, all of that. So much of the focus is on like the plastic conversation, you know, around like the waste and recycling and things like that. I feel very fortunate to be able to, in the process of creating my own brand, have kind of a behind the scenes look at like what some of the biggest issues are and in creating selfless um because getting into it I was just like oh my god I don't know what the hell I can do to actually like make an impact because this is such like a huge problem you know but even in looking for selfless like what's the biggest social impact that we can make from the sale of these products channeling it down bringing it down to like okay what will make that biggest impact um for what I was able to find it's a around like, you know, um, preventing deforestation in the first place in order to protect, that, yeah. you know, the resources. Old forests and biodiversity. Yeah. Exactly. The biodiversity, obviously the indigenous groups that rely on those areas, of course the animals, all that kind of stuff. But most importantly, the in what I've been able to see, the biggest thing affecting climate change, which is, you know, just carbon and how that's, you know, really impacting it. And by protecting these forested regions, are able to help reduce the problem of carbon. And going into it, I was just like, oh, I don't really know what we can do. And not like this has been a collective effort and it's because of the people who have like purchased the products, but we've been able to uh, protect over 300,000 acres of rainforest from deforestation wow. in Bolivia, which is, you know, largely rainforest and everything. Yes. And it's like the 
how like the impact that one person can have, even if it's just for one tiny little aspect of the huge climate change problem, you don't have to understand all of it. You don't need to understand all the complexities, but just by being able to focus on like one aspect of it, an individual can make such a huge difference, which mm-hmm. is why I'm so against like, like with what you're doing, the way that you were teaching everyone, obviously the way that you're creating content now, um, through what I'm trying to do with selfless. It's like, that's why I'm so against like that individual action doesn't make a difference. <laughs> blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Go to hell. Y'all are boring. <laughs> exactly. I'm like, it's, it's so against the truth and look at, you know, the impact that a single individual can have. So right. I love that you've been able to help like change the minds of people like at even like a place like Berth- Berkeley. I'm really curious, like what in the content that you're creating around all of these issues, what do you really hope like people walk away from when they watch your videos and what do you really want to like focus on educating through content creation and Mm. as a content creator, like what impact do you want to have? Well, like I said, she's new to content creation. (laughs) She's still trying to learn out how this works. Um, For real, like even just like you said, you you think you have this funny idea, you set up the camera and you're like staring at yourself and you're like, I'm not doing this. (laughs) <laughs> it's so awkward at the beginning. It's so awkward. It's so hard. Um, I really want to push people. Like, I think I want to make activism or, or like, giving a shit mm-hmm. the hot girl thing to do. Yes. And I feel like a lot of people try to just say that and be like, oh, my God, hot girls vote. But you can't just say that. You have to be that. Like, you have to, yes. like, be about it. Mm-hmm. I was actually thinking about, like, how, like, the post office got yassified. During COVID, yes, I forgot and like about pa- that. Planned Parenthood, yeah. Um, what else? Uh, unions right now, mm-hmm. they're having a scalding hot moment. Oh my god, everybody's like, yeah, let me shake my ass for unions. <laughs> and, I love it. And like that's exactly <laughs> the energy that we like. We you can have values and have and be fun. Mm-hmm. And I think a lot of people, you know, they go to the fast fashion, the makeup, the video game side of the internet because they want to turn off their brains. They don't want to think about something stressful. Mm -hmm. I don't think that giving a shit needs to be stressful. I love Mm -hmm. life. I love my community. I love my descendants. Mm -hmm. And I just want, like, I am like, you know, trying to, you know, I'm giving birth to all these ideas. I'm trying to make the world a better place. I'm trying to help you get to where you want to go. And I want to share that energy with people where it's just like, no, like this is this is actually what the baddies are on right now. Mm-hmm. Um, you lame if you're not up. <laughs> and back to the plant milk it. example, because I was literally just writing something about it. Like I w- like it was like something like 49 percent of so half of Gen Z uh, is embarrassed, is ashamed to order dairy milk in public really weaponizing the power of cringe yes for climate it's action so powerful Period. honestly like the <laughs> the amount of things that i have seen cringe be able to help with from like a mental health perspective from a social issue perspective and like sustainability perspective like let's make being unsustainable like the most cringe thing that and you, you can do right and you, <laughs> but like what i'm what i think i need to learn with, with contemplation is you can't just say it mm-hmm. you have to like really make people believe it Mm -hmm. you know what i mean like what if we could actually make like fast fashion like fucking cringe like people are going to be in your comments like are you fucking kidding me (laughs) wow wow yeah (laughs) like 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 you like you're gonna get bullied (laughs) yeah you know what i mean and um not that i support bullying but like if it's it's for the planet then then it's for the planet you know maybe sometimes you have to sometimes you have to do what you gotta do (laughs) (laughs) yes i love that perspective though because that's such a like looking at the root issue and the, the the cause and what's like really driving the unhealthy and really negative um, behaviors for the planet. Because like, I know you talked a little bit about how you like don't love zero waste. And I think one of the things I've had an issue with, with a lot of like, you know, uh, content online that focuses on sustainability is that it's so surface level where I'm like, okay, I'm not going to like, obviously it's not a bad thing that you're like, throwing away one less item that you are purchasing something that's recyclable versus not but i'm like this is not creating lasting systemic no change or it's not even like supporting the conversation around like having like more systemic change what you're talking about i think is so great because i'm like yeah that has the power to just make such a massive level of change from a more systemic root issue perspective than focusing on like the surface level shit you know 
I don't know. I think it's I think it's great. We need to yassify <laughs> sustainability. Why that's not? that's so awesome. And I'm excited make to see messy. like make it hot. Shake your ass. Like, yeah. you know, go do some ecosystem restoration. Do a little TikTok dance while you're there. Like post about it. You know what I mean? Like be up in there. You gotta get you gotta make it cool. <laughs> I love it. I mean, that's actually another thing I was going to ask. Like, what ways do you think? Because I think a lot of people online, you know look at people like you, for example, who are creating content about this, who are talking about these kind of things, who are passionate about like sustainability or whatever social issue. And they're like, good for you. Keep doing that. We need more people like you. And then don't really do anything about it. Right. What do you think like viewers, us as individuals can do within our power to like contribute to the larger conversation around this? That's a huge question. Mm -hmm. Like there's so many different things. So anything will work but i know f even as a viewer when i like listen to this type of content i'm like what's something i could do like right now like right. what's a, what's a right, change right. i can make right now okay i am so about community power like mm. ask yourself what your community needs mm -hmm. you know what i mean like I, I'm like going back to the idea of like patchworking together systemic change. I think about how like the Bay Area is a really good example of how they've been working together to obviously you kind of like all these cities and counties have worked together because they have to to make like public transit infrastructure. Mm -hmm. But that doesn't just happen. It's like all of these people, you know, we're going to city council meetings, showing up, mm -hmm. zooming in, bullying on their elected officials on Twitter, whatever mm -hmm. you need to do. And it comes together so that you get the funding and then like the plan, whether it's like you're a high school student and you're like, okay, what can I do? It's like, okay, does your school have a garden? Mm -hmm. What kind of food are you serving in the cafeterias? Because that's also like an issue, issue of access and equity. Um, you know, the, the school food system in the United mm -hmm. States is very corrupt. They're serving very unhealthy foods, especially mm -hmm. in black and brown communities. Yep. And there's all, these, there's all these programs popping up left and right to get yeah f like farm programs garden programs started on high school campuses so that kids can have fresh nutritious food it's an after school activity so like you know that's like free child care for the parent mm -hmm. um so it's making it easier on the parents who are who could be you know working late hours etc yeah there's and and obviously that is not a systemic solution that doesn't mm -hmm. solve the problem but there's there are these interventions that are available to us to save ourselves mm -hmm. And uh, that's just like one example, like I'm, you know, off the top of my head, but like it, there's something that you could do for your school, for your workplace, for a company that you work for or own, for your city, for your county. You don't have to go, like to be a climate activist, you don't need to be like literally going into Congress. Mm -hmm. I think that people think you need to be like in the streets, mm -hmm. in them streets with a <laughs> yeah. sign. Yeah. And you have to be like just rage all the time and you have to be pulling up to like, you know, your elected officials office and being like, we and it's just there's so many other smaller, more manageable things that you could do a couple hours a week, you know, get a group together, find out like what your community needs, whether it's a social justice thing, homelessness, et cetera. Like, you know, there there are in it like cities are starting to fund ish initiatives to get everybody housed. Mm -hmm. My friend Laurel works full time in Moran. Her full time job is getting people housed. Mm, that's and cool. That funding doesn't just you know appear out of nowhere for her yep. to have that job and for those programs you supported. It. It's a community effort at mm -hmm. some on some level. Somebody was like, you know what, this is bullshit. Mm -hmm. I don't know why we have we're in one of the richest counties in the United States and we have people who don't ha who are unhoused, mm -hmm. and they're literally helping people get housed. Mm -hmm. So you know what I mean? Like you, there's something that we can do for our communities. You just yep. have to start somewhere. Yep start with the small things like we I uh could not agree more and I I feel like in my personal opinion I'm like we need less Greta Thunbergs and we need more people doing small actions that are contributing to the betterment of the and world when you know think small actions they they do have a tendency to think plastic free soap mm -hmm. when it's like how okay I love I love yeah. it I love the <laughs> thought maybe a little misguided how mm -hmm. can we turn my small action as plastic free soap into okay w four hours a month I'm going to commit to four hours a month of volunteering for a cause I care about mm -hmm. that's you can do it yep. one hour a week or you do one session once a month you know what I mean? Start an organization, join something that already exists. Put your time, put your brain on, like into it. Yeah. And speaking of that too, how can people get involved with your nonprofit organization or how can they support yours? Because 
I think it's great what you're doing. Thank you. <laughs> of course. Um, so we are expanding um, educational programs, and we're also trying to help young people win campaigns. So if you are looking to, you know, get your school a compost program or a garden or something fun like this, we are trying to help you, like, get the resources and the training and the mentorship that you need to win that and also to, you know, um, demand better and more environment education in your school. So we're working on universities is easiest for us because I started the program as a, at a university and it's like easily translatable. We are also developing K through 12 programs right now. Mm. And I have a really incredible hey. team that is working so hard. They constantly are like, I'm behind. They mm -hmm. are, they're moving so fast and I'm like, Oh, I gotta pick up my face. Like, I gotta get all <laughs> um, and yeah, so I am so excited that we are expanding. We're identifying like pilot universities and high schools to be working to be operating programs in in the fall. Mm -hmm. On our website, if you're if you're like everything you're saying, sign me up. On our website, there's a get involved form if you're interested in like bringing some sort of program or having us yeah working with us in some way campaign um, to your school. You can fill that out. Or you could email us, which is also on our website, if you want to actually join the volunteer team. Oh, cool. Yeah, we're still excited. We have high schoolers. We have college students. We have people who are grown in the workforce. Like I said, pretty much everyone's under 25. We have a couple mm -hmm. of wonderful millennials who I love. Um, but it is like a youth-led thing, which I That's think so is very special. I do, too. And, but I also appreciate the inter intergenerational collaboration. Yeah, of course. But you can't deny the passion and rage of yes. Gen Z yeah. and the power that they have. You and know. the memes. We're yeah. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> We're trying to make it funny. We are trying to make it like fun and, and stress-free. I love um, it. Also, what's your domain? Like, what's your website for everyone who's listening? Sustainableandjustfuture.org. Also, if you're listening and you have some money, run out of money. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I, yes. Every, we're, we're operating on a volunteer basis right now, but um, I would love to be able to like pay everyone an hourly wage. That's mm -hmm. very important to me. You know, I want this to be an equitable. I'm not trying to exploit people for their labor. So as of soon course, as we yeah. can be fully funded, I'd love to be able to offer everyone an hourly wage. And um, yeah, we have a couple of funding opportunities Ooh, okay um, but saucy. can always use more yeah, so can, everyone uh, like, please go they are the pending <laughs> they're like september so it's oh, like, okay okay well everyone please go to the website check it out check out the work that you do i think it's so awesome i love that it's focused on gen z and it's really giving resources to like university students and soon k through 12 students as well to be you able to make that you should not have to go to college action. to get an environmental education period that is your birthright and you, you should be able to get it anywhere I love that because I'm a college dropout, so <laughs> <laughs> I resonate with what you're Ooh. saying. You don't need, I know, edgy. What can I say? Ooh. <laughs> I know, a little bit different than Berkeley, but. <laughs> and paid up, paid up though. <laughs> Got some like burns in here. <laughs> oh yeah, I know. <laughs> well, thank you. I mean, like. where can people follow you on social media to see the awesome ass content and yesification of sustainability <laughs> content that you make? <laughs> I think like I'm now I'm a tall order. Like I really am. Gonna have to figure out how to yes. <laughs> um, I'm on social media as Sage Lanier, Lanier, L E N I E R. Perfect. Please, everyone, go check her out. She makes awesome content, and I love the type of conversations that you're having and you're inspiring. Thank you so much for coming on. That time flew I know, by that was so, so fast. fast. Oh my gosh. And when you said you could talk about this for 10 hours, I'm like, yeah, do you want to like have that 10 hour <laughs> conversation? Because <laughs> I'm so down. <laughs> but seriously. Happy hour, Moku Kitchen. <laughs> I know, right? I mean, thank you so much for coming on, seriously. And um, thank you to everyone who, like, listened to this. I hope if you guys were able to take anything away, it's just small, actionable items do matter. You can make a difference and go support her nonprofit organization, <laughs> of course. But thank you again. I appreciate it. And everyone as well, if you haven't already, make sure you subscribe to the YouTube channel so you can hear more podcasts like this. This has been a presentation of Cadence 13 on Odyssey Studio. New episodes wherever you get your podcasts. And we'll see you guys in the next episode. Love you all. Mwah.